Hey guys, welcome back to the 18th episode of the Glide Tutorial. Today we're looking at the controls, but inside of the game scene, not the player from the menu, the actual player from the game scene where our game is going to happen, basically. So we're going to be starting right off the get-go right here by <laughs> cleaning up our script folder. Let's put that in here. And let's right-click on script, create a new one. This one is going to be called player movement or player motor, I like to call it. So player motor, let's open it up and we are going to have some fun. So just to zoom in on this a little bit, clean it up like we always do, we're going to start with the essential. The essential being the player character controller. So that's exactly what we're going to be using um, to control our players. So we're going to start by declaring a field. Then a few other fields, private float base speed. We'll go with 10 meters a second. Uh, let's do private float rotation speed. So rot speed x. How fast can you move towards the, um, well, how fast can you move towards the left or right? That's on the X axis. And let's do the exact same thing, but for the Y axis. I like to do it a little bit slower. Okay, once we have these uh, field right here, we're gonna start with a private voice start, of course, in which we are going to assign the controller. So controller is going to equal get component. We're getting the component called character controller. That's the type we want in here. And then we're going to move on to the actual meat of this uh, script. And that's a weird way to type in update. Here we go. So private void update. And OK, what do we need to do here? First, we need to give the player some forward um, velocity. Is that how you write forward? Forward. And the way we're going to go about this is by actually taking the transforms dot forward. So move vector actually vector3 move vector is going to equal transform dot forward. So no matter where this transform is looking, if it's on the real world Z axis, or if it's in another direction, it's always going to go forward based on the transform, not based on the real world, actually. So we take that forward vector and we multiply it by the base speed. And then we are going to be grabbing the player input. So gather players input. The way we do this is by creating another vector three. Let's call it inputs is equal to manager instance get player input. And this way we have the drag mechanic or the accelerometer mechanic. It really depends on which one he has enabled. Now, once we have this, let's get the delta direction really useful. Um, you're going to see why in a second. We are going to start by getting the yaw. So vector three yaw. Hopefully I can pronounce that right. <laughs> it's going to be equal to input the x times transform dot right times rotation speed dot x and then times the time dot delta time. So that's a really long line, but that's how we get the yaw. Same thing goes for the pitch this time, but we're going to be using the um, the y instead. So inputs dot y. And that's also, if you guys remember, we also killed the, um, the, the real y of the accelerometer and that's exactly y here. So because we want to be using the z axis for the accelerometer and not the actual y axis. Uh, this is why we replace input.z by input.y. But if you forgot about it, don't worry too much uh, as long as it's working, right? So yeah, pitch, and then finally we're going to be getting vector3 direction. It's equal to yaw plus pitch. With this direction, we can actually change the rotation of the plane. We can also limit the player. We're going to start by limiting the player. So make sure we limit the player from doing a loop. Uh, I know, I'm sorry, we're not going to be supporting loops as it is a real mess. So let's do max x in this case is equal to quaternion, look rotation, move vector plus direction. So if move vector and uh, direction added together actually go beyond the uh, the maximum you can go before you actually do a, a loop or before you actually reset your angle, uh, we are not going to allow that. So if he's not going too far up slash down, we are going to add the direction to the move vector. But if he is actually going too far, we're not going to do anything. So let's do the if statement right here. If max x is smaller than 90 and max x is bigger than say, let's go with 70 in this case, or max x is bigger than 270 and max x smaller than 290 then that means he's going too far so too far don't do anything so just keep the same exact move vector that you had before 
Now, in case you're not going too far, we're going to be doing um, add the direction to the current move. So move vector plus equal direction. Also, have the player looking, uh, actually have the player facing where he's going. So have the player face where he is going by doing a transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot look rotation with the move vector. And that's pretty much all we need. Oh yeah, of course, we need to move him. <laughs> we never actually move the guy right here. So let's do a move him by doing a controller dot move. We're moving using the move vector, of course. Let's actually multiply that by time, the delta time. This way he actually goes at the right speed. So that's our script right here. Let's uh, make sure we actually save and we're going to go right inside of the game. Drag and drop this on the player, not on the model. So I'm going to remove the menu player. We don't need him anymore. And we're going to be replacing that by the player motor. Now at this time, I'm going to be booting the Unity remote and I'm going to try and play this game. So is it working on my phone? Let me quickly check this. So let's go under the preloader scene. See if it boots on my phone and it does. Okay, so it did boot on my phone. These are my controls. I'm using the swipe one right now. And let's head right into the game for say level one. And let's have a look if we can actually move around. So feels like we can actually move around and it's actually looking quite good right now. So I'm only using my finger right now and I'm moving around the scene and that is our control. Now, of course, it doesn't look very fun because of, <laughs> we don't really have anything to check the depth. Well, actually there is something. There is the, <laughs> the actual scene on the left side of the screen right now, but oh, I went the wrong way. Anyway, uh, we need to start creating levels around this so we can actually see where we're going. Good thing we have a skybox, but that is definitely not enough. So guys, this is where we're going to be ending today's episode. I'm actually doing them quite fast. I don't know why uh, it actually went super fast now, but that's all we need for the player motor. Turns out it took me a lot of time to actually find how to make this work properly, but it doesn't take as much time to communicate it to you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Like the video if it helped. Subscribe to the channel, check out the Patreon page, check out the Facebook page, and if you want to contact me, please don't use any of the emails you see online as they are my work email and uh, keep them only for work. So thank you for not spamming me there. By the way, I'm not replying if you just ask question on there. If you want to ask question, head over to the Facebook page, and that's pretty much it. Hey, thank you so much for watching. You should have been clicking on that button a long time ago. Now it's only me rambling. Okay, goodbye.